All right, to uh, get a better understanding, uh, let's check another problem, the turnpike reconstruction problem. So um, if we have endpoints on the x-axis uh, with all their coordinates sorted in increasing order, and to uh, simplify the problem, let's assume that the first one is always placed at the origin. It's always zero, okay? there must be that many distances between every pair of points, right? So given the coordinates of endpoints, it's very simple to calculate all those distances. But the reverse problem is very hard. The reverse problem is that given that many distances, we're supposed to reconstruct a point set from those distances which means all the distances are given, and then we're supposed to find their coordinates. Okay, for example, say so we have a distance set in sorted order like this. Uh, if we count the number of distances, uh, there are 15 of them. Okay, so the first question is, what is n? How many points do we have? All right, just to solve this equation, right? Say so if we have n points, there are going to be that many distances, and that number is 15. So we solve this equation for n. So what is n? 6, right? But we don't really have to recover 6 points. We only need to recover 4. Why? Because we don't, one thing for sure is that the first one is 0. Okay, so x sub 1 is always 0. And we also know that x sub 6 must be 10. Why? Because 10 is the largest distance, right? So if the first one is 0, there's ought to be another one at position 10 in order to obtain this distance 10, right? So this is the initial condition we have. We have one point at position 0, the other one at position 10. And we can eliminate the largest distance 10 from the distance set. Well, how about continue solving the problem in this way? Say, if uh, having the largest distance 10 means that we must have a point placed at position 10, if the next largest distance is 8, does it mean that we can have another point placed at position 8. Think about that. Not really. We have two options, right? But nevertheless, step 3 is uh, we just find the next largest distance and check. In this case, there are going to be actually two options. One is that we have one point which is x sub 5, the point next to x sub 6, which is placed at position 8. Or it's also possible that we have x sub 2 being equal to 2. So here we actually we have two options. Both are possible in the sense that they both correspond to the distance 8. Either this distance is 8 or this one is also 8. So that means there are two branches in this game tree, and we search along one direction first. Right? So if we assume that there's one point here, then the next thing to do is we collect 8 into our solution set, and then delete the corresponding distances from the distance set. Okay, so if we have one point here, it corresponds to the distances. One is 8 and the other one is 2. So we should eliminate 8 and 2 from the distance set and continue to check the next largest distance, which is 7. And again, we're going to have two options, right? Two options. One is to place x sub 4 at position 7. And the other one is, if we don't have this point, the x sub 2 can be 3, right? So 
here is the two options. Let's continue moving from this node and along this path first. Okay, if we collect this one into the solution, we're supposed to then delete the corresponding distances from the distance set. What must we delete? We should delete first, should delete seven, and then one, and then three, right? So we delete one, three, and seven. You know what to do next, right? So starting from this one, we continue to check the next largest distance, which is six. And again, we have two options, okay? It corresponds to the situation like this. Either place x sub 3 at position 6 or place x sub 2 at position 4. Okay, is this one possible? And the answer is no. Why not? Because if we place x sub 3 here, then we're going to have a distance 1. But we have no 1 left in the distance set. Therefore, that's impossible. Okay, and how about the other option? How about this one? This one is also not possible because of what? Think about it. If we have one point here, uh, we will obtain a distance 4 and another distance 4. We're supposed to have two fours, but we only have one 4 in the distance set, and therefore this is not possible. Okay, which means we don't have other options, means this one doesn't work, means we must undo and backtrack to the previous situation, means we must recover and recover the distance set. Now, back to this point. Okay, so the other option is to place x sub 2 at position 3. All right. So that corresponds to the distances of 3, 7, and 5. Okay, now let's remove 3, 7, and 5. All right, now continue. The next distance is 6. So again, we have two options. Uh, two options. Okay, now let's try this one. Is it okay to place x sub 3 at position 4? And the answer is no. Why not? Check. If we have a point here, we're supposed to have a distance 4 plus another distance 4, and we only have one 4, and therefore that's impossible. So cut this branch and remove this point. So next is to check if it's okay to place another point here. Is it okay? And the answer is yes. Uh, we're supposed to remove the distance of 2, 3, 4, and 6. So that works. All right. The next largest distance is 5. And we have only one possible solution to place x sub 3 at position 5. And check if rest of the distances can be successfully removed from the distance set without any conflicts. Is it okay? Uh, you can take some time to check all those distances. And finally, okay, this is one solution. All right, now uh, let's try to find the pattern here. What we did was actually a post-order traversal, which can be easily implemented by recursion. At each stage, we have two options. And based on the current largest distance, right? So we recursively check one direction. If the answer is yes, we uh, collect this point by deleting the corresponding distances from the set and continue the recursion, right? If the recursion returns no, we must recover the distance set. And that is the backtracking step. And we do it for both directions. Okay, now uh, let's see the pseudocode for this program. This is not the complete pseudocode. This is only for uh, checking the, uh, the first option. Uh, I suggest you to click on the pause 
and read the code by yourself first. Now let's go through it together. It's quite straightforward, right? Uh, first of all, it's a recursive call, so it defines the boundary of the problem. X is the solution set, while D is the distance set. N is the total number of points. Left and right gives the boundary of the current problem that is not solved yet. So here we're assuming that x sub 1 to x sub left minus 1 have already been determined. Also, x of right plus 1 to x of n are solved. We're supposed to determine from x of left to x of right. Okay, so step 1, we initialize the signal found to be false. And check the distance set. If this distance set is empty, means everything is fine, everything is done. It's already solved, so we just return true. And the next thing to do is to find the maximum distance from the current distance set. Okay, and then we have two options, right? Two branches. Let's consider option one first. That is to assign the maximum distance to the rightmost position. Then we have to check if this satisfies the constraint. Means we have to check, uh, let's check the distances between this x and every other x of i's and check if every one of them is in the current distance set. Okay, so this is what this check function does. Uh, this is the pruning step. Okay, if this step is okay, it means that it's okay to collect s of right into the solution set, which means we must update the distance that is to assign this max distance to x of right and then delete those distances from the distance set. Continue to recursively solve this problem from left to right minus 1 because right is already set. All right, and if this is fine, then we are basically we're done. Otherwise, if it doesn't work, we must undo. Undo means we must insert those distances back to the distance set. So recover the distance set. Okay, undo everything and check the next option. The next option is very much similar to the previous one. Okay, so if the previous option doesn't work, we must consider the other option that is to place x of left at this position, right? And then everything else is just similar. We must check if this x of left is okay. Check the current distance set and to see if everything's okay. If it is okay, then we collect x of left and then delete the corresponding distances from the distance set and then recursively try to reconstruct from left plus 1 to right because x of left has already been collected. All right, And if that one doesn't work, we must first undo, undo everything and then return false, means this one doesn't work and then we must backtrack again, okay, recursively. All right, so this is one example of applying backtracking to solve the problem. Uh, in general, we have this template for backtracking. Uh, this i means we are currently at collecting x sub i, right? So what we do is generally uh, initialize font to be false. We're supposed to collect partial solutions from x sub i to x sub n. If i is larger than n, it means it's completely solved. We just return true. Otherwise, for the current x sub i, we check every option of x sub i. Right? For each x sub i, we check if it satisfies the constraint. That's the pruning part. If this is okay, we just collect x sub i in 
and recursively try to solve for i plus 1. All right. If this is not found, if this one doesn't work, we must undo for this i, and then check the next option of x sub i. And if it is found, then break, return found, we are done. Okay. Otherwise, if it's not found, we must check every x sub i. And if we are jump out of this for loop and still not found, we're supposed to return false. So what is the time complexity? It's actually very hard to say because it depends on many factors. Uh, first of all, this for loop, right? It depends on the size of S, right? So for example, in the eight queen problem, it, it is eight. And in the reconstruction problem, it is two. So certainly we would prefer to have this size as small as possible. And secondly, this check function, or say the pruning function, right? It depends on the specific problem we are solving, right? And actually, this is the key to the efficiency. A good pruning function can eliminate a large subtree at a very early stage, and therefore save the time. But if the function itself is very much complicated, it's going to cause us. So this is another factor that will affect the time complexity. And this, if OK, if it is OK, we must do a lot of things, right? So the question is, for how many x that this test is OK? If no matter how large this s is, there's only one possible answer, then it will be very fast, right? But if almost everyone is OK, it's going to be quite expensive. And usually it's very difficult to estimate the number of OK situations. And therefore, a complexity analysis for backtracking is very difficult. All right. Uh, one more thing is in some complicated problems, different variables may have different sizes. And in this case, the order of searching matters. So for example, here we have two options. Both of them correspond to the same problem. So uh, what do you think? Which way would you prefer? The smaller size first. Why? Because if this one doesn't work, we can cut a larger subtree. That's why.